As the landscape of our environment continually changes, so does the landscape of healthcare in the United States. From the rural isolation of an Alaskan community hospital to the urban insulation of an inner city clinic, healthcare providers daily give something back from what they have learned so that others will also benefit. This is the story of MedEx Northwest, a story diverse in people and culture, landscape and environment, commitment and community. This is the CBS Evening News with Roger Mudd. One of the effects of the population explosion is a serious shortage of doctors in many parts of the country. The growing town of Othello, Washington, is one place where the shortage has been felt most severely, but they've come up with a novel solution to the problem. In 1970, CBS News came to the farming community of Othello, where a groundbreaking pilot program aimed at solving the health care crisis in rural America was underway. Like so many other country doctors overloaded with patient care, Dr. Richard Bunch thought about leaving Othello. Nine months ago, he changed his mind when two former military corpsmen joined his clinic in a program to alleviate the staggering load on the rural doctor. They call it Medex. Medex got its share of press back then, Commissioned in 1968 by U.S. Surgeon General Dr. William Stewart, the MedEx program was developed by Dr. Richard Smith at the University of Washington School of Medicine. His vision was to create a new class of medical professionals who would assist the overworked physicians in rural communities. He convinced the State Medical Association and the School of Medicine to join with him in this partnership and then got federal funds to, to support the development of this career. Dr. Smith not only saw the need for additional manpower in rural practices, but also tapped a unique source to get it, medical corpsmen recently discharged from the armed forces. Combining their extensive military training with three months training in the MedEx Physician Assistant Program, the corpsmen then completed a year-long internship in an area where they were needed most. That is probably the first step made in the right direction for, for many years. Dr. Bunch was one of 14 physicians chosen by Dr. Smith to serve as preceptors to the new physician assistants. Dr. Smith uh, identified who were the most powerful physicians in Washington State and got them on board. It was also the first state to pass a, a licensing law for PAs, and it was the first time that the State Medical Association had actually put forth a legislative agenda to create anything new like this, and it strengthened the Medical Association because they were so proud of how hard they worked together on this project. So it was, it was a pretty amazing time in history. Othello still feels like a small town despite its continued growth. A new medical clinic was built in the early 1990s, and Dr. Bunch still practices there. As for ex-corpsman Paul Snyder and John Betts, who came to Othello as graduates of the University of Washington's first MedEx class, they're still there too, over 30 years later. Yeah, one of the fossils. <laughs> it's been 32 years, and I went from utilizing the physician assistant idea as a stepping stone to get to medical school uh, to finding out that actually being a physician assistant was a pretty gratifying career. This just seemed to fit just like an old pair of gloves or an old pair of shoes. How are you guys doing? Dr. Bunch was young in his early 30s and he just had all kinds of stories about going hunting and doing this and I just thought it would be a fun place to go to. And they had kind of a matching process going on where we listed all our likes and dislikes and the preceptors did that also. So John and I matched up pretty well with these guys. When we came to spend the weekend with Dr. Bunch, uh, he took us out in the pothole shooting. He, he said if, if we got in, he, we knew enough medicine. Uh, he wanted to go out and have a little fun and he thought we'd, have, we'd enjoy the break and we did. I decided at that point that uh, I could work with this guy and I was right. The question was, are people concerned that you're not really a doctor? And my impression was that we had a bunch of people out here that were very medical care deprived and they were pretty glad to have anybody. But you got sent home with a fever? One of the difficulties there were doctors in those days, you know, were very protective of their practices and of course some of the concerns were 
well, if we bring yeah. PAs in, they're going to, pretty soon they'll be hanging out their own shingle and they'll be competing with us. And so I think primarily that Maddox came trying to find doctors interested in this and we couldn't take the pace anymore. Uh, and so it was to us, uh, you know, idea too good to be true. <laughs> we owe such incredible gratitude <laughs> to, uh, to physicians across the region who have over the years continued to open up their offices and to bring PA students in. Dr. Bunch also is uh, very well known for his involvement on the Board of Medical Examiners. He really created a lot of credibility for physician assistants and PA roles. So uh, he seems like a mild-mannered uh, rural doc, but you know, watch out for him. This country doctor has been practicing for almost 40 years. Ten years ago, Dr. Bunch's son Randy joined the clinic and recently two more physician assistants were added to the staff. For the original PAs and their pioneer preceptor, life here and the work they love keeps them connected to a place that still fits like an old pair of gloves or an old pair of shoes. I would like to slow down a little bit, but I would, you know, I would certainly like to practice at least three days a week for another five years if my brain is good and my health is good. <laughs> because I really enjoy what I do and I enjoy practicing with my son and with these guys who've had a good time over the years. Hey, your heart's beating. That's always a good sign. I have no plans for retirement at all. I'll work as long as I can see, hear, and think. Josefa, are we doing okay? Well, there's some days, and I'm sure all of us have some days when, okay. oh, I can't do this another day and I'm gonna retire tomorrow. But every day you get a thousand pats on the back. You know, you'll get a letter saying, you know, I just want to let you know we think you're special. For decades, migrant farm workers have traveled from Latin America to the fertile Yakima Valley in eastern Washington. Many of these workers have put down their own roots creating a new community of transplants, and their children have become the bridge between the old ways and the new. Being of Hispanic Latino descent, I saw a need for not only healthcare access, but healthcare access for the underserved migrant farm workers. A lot of the times it sounds like a cliche, but it really isn't here in this community. There really is a need, not only for good quality healthcare, but culturally competent health care. The main reason I believe I became a PA is because I wanted to do more. The clientele I work with, I think they appreciate it because I have that culture with them. And I speak to them on, a, on their level as much as I can because I'm from the same culture here. My practice here at Farm Workers Clinic, I'm completely passionate about the children. I really enjoy them. It's a difficult part of practice because the children don't speak to me. I have to look for the problem and it's more of a challenge. I need to figure them out. And I work with the mother, the father, the family in fact, because usually when a baby comes in, the whole family comes in right along with them. So that's another cultural issue. And I enjoy that. I mean, it's, they're my people. I love it. There are communities where we have actively recruited folks to come into the medics program and increasingly in the last years they've been Hispanic farm worker folks from that background who have a tremendous contribution to make to their communities in terms of being bilingual, understanding the culture and so forth. And these are community folks getting their training now, not having to come to Seattle and going back to their community where they serve as role models, which is a critical issue, as well as providing culturally sensitive, culturally competent health care, which is what PAs are all about as well. Mike Rojas is a good example of that. He had sort of come up through the community and come up actually through the farm workers clinic, doing a variety of clinical kinds of things. And now he's back there as a PA. It'll be exciting to see him and what he does as he grows older in that community. We're very proud of him and, and folks like him who have had the courage to get training in this exciting profession. We decided we needed a, a formal a translation for physician assistant in Spanish, uh, since we have a word for nurse, which is enfermera, uh, physician, which is medico, uh, 
a nursing assistant, which is asistente de enfermera, but we didn't have a word for physician assistant. So now we finally do, which is asociado médico. We really support leadership development among the rest of the faculty. So Carmen's involvement with, with the Hispanic definition of physician assistance is a great example. We expect our faculty to be uh, not only good faculty and good role models, but sort of uppity individuals in the community that are out there seeing opportunities for, not just for the PA profession, although that's what we're about, but access to care. Healthcare access, it seems like there's a lot of rhetoric regarding that issue. But as a healthcare provider in a small town, providing primary care, it's not rhetoric, it's a reality. There really is a need for healthcare access, especially in the smaller towns. I'm actually from Grandview, so this whole area of the Agamalia is home to me. So having been able to go to school here and live here and work while I was going to the medics program was a great opportunity for me. I love the area, I'm from here, so um, I think I'll stay here for a few more years. Alaska. The people who live and work here have a special bond with their environment. The beauty of the landscape exerts an almost mystical force on resident and visitor alike. The sky goes on forever. We have the most incredible sunsets and sunrises here because you can see so far. It really takes your breath away to be part of such vastness. It makes you feel part of the earth, but at the same time, so incredibly small. You realize how very fragile human life is in this place. In the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, where the land flattens out and the water flows to the sea, the town of Bethel is the regional hub for dozens of remote native villages. In this part of western Alaska, the land is tundra, wet in summer and frozen solid in winter. For MedEx graduates Martha Flores and Helen Hankin, it is a place that both challenges and rewards. I wished I had a million dollars so I could pay for each and every one of the patients coming from the villages into Bethel to get a little bit further evaluated. There's no economy really out in the villages uh, as a result. Sometimes they'll come in with no money, and so, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to see people in need. Yes, 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 yes. Alaska has the highest per capita number of PAs per 100,000 population of any state in the Union. So PAs uh, have made tremendous contributions to Bush communities, particularly in communities that are so small that you can't afford to have a physician. There's not a dense enough population and not enough going on. I'm the provider for a village up on the Yukon called Pilot Station, which has about 500 people. I'm their village doc. They have health aides, and I go to the village a couple times a year and stay for a week and see patients there. And I take part in the life of the village while I'm there. A lot of people come up and do two years and get their loans repaid, and then they leave. They're not here for the long haul. And the native people really want providers that are going to stay. And so, in the beginning, they kind of wait and see if you're going to be a keeper. I'm Helen Hankin. I'm a PA here. In this particular area that we serve, we are a very busy hospital. You've come in for and uh, we have, in the past, had a very transient uh, physician and provider population. Uh, we were having trouble recruiting physicians, so we decided to open it up to mid-level providers. Well, PAs are extraordinarily important in an area where um, the need for medical services is great and the resources to provide them is very limited. Our very, very first choice would be any Native student from throughout any program in the United States. Uh, we have Native preference here. We are trying to actually promote and support Native sovereignty and creating a system that will allow the Natives to work within their own system. I was born and raised uh, in the YK Delta. I always knew I wanted to come back simply because uh, having been a health aide and seeing all the illnesses, I always knew that once I got the training then I'd be able to come back and provide that care. Based at the Yukon Kuskokwim Native Health Corporation Hospital, Martha and Helen work in the outpatient clinic, often busy with patients who come by boat or plane from the outlying villages. They also advise the village health aides by phone. Uh, can you give me the vital signs? 
big issue in Bush, Alaska is alcoholism. So folks really need some good skills in dealing with that. We spend quite a bit of time in our curriculum on that. We're seeing a lot more diabetes, and I think it's related to our uh, dietary habits have changed from the native traditional foods, foods you got off the land, for example, berry, fish, moose. Now we're seeing more, more of the younger kids um, eating a lot of processed foods, pop, you know, candy, that sort of stuff. And their lifestyle is certainly different from the lifestyle I grew up in when I was younger. This culture is incredibly complicated. I can only begin to appreciate the subtlety after being here for, for two years. Martha has a connection with the people that I'll never have because she is of them and they trust her because of that. Having a, a person that's caring and, and sensitive is really the, the key. In Martha's situation, it takes a special other meaning because she grew up here and she decided to put her upbringing to a very positive end. Uh, and Helen and, and our other mid-level providers, um, they've come to this area because not only the medicine, but because of the people. The Yupik people are wonderful. They're very warm, um, they're very inviting, they bring you into their culture very openly. There's a spirit of the land here that's truly amazing, and the people who are from here have that spirit, and they know it. And so once you work with them and, and get to know them a little bit, it's, it's just a wonderful place to be. An hour by air and a world away from Bethel is Anchorage, a city of urban sprawl surrounded by scenic splendor. At the Alaska Native Medical Center, PA Sherry Nelson and LPN Tom Schaefer have forged a special friendship with an emphasis on teamwork. I work with several other physician assistants, some from the MedEx program and a few nurse practitioners. And the nurses help out a lot. We all do a pretty good job, we're a good team. We're the fast-paced clinic, get them in and get them out. They like to use the nurses um, as a resource. We'll bring the patients into the room and get any additional information not covered in the triage note and relay that to the PAs. They'll even uh, ask us if we have any suggestions on what uh, course to take in the treatment. It actually feels pretty good. It makes you feel like or it makes the nurses in general feel like, you know, part of the healthcare team. All right, you two, knock it off. Sherry and I work closely together and we're always cracking jokes at each other and we've probably worked together for about three years and she can read my mind, I can read her mind and it, you know, just kind of like those things along. Sherry Nelson, she had been a health aide in one of the villages for the Yukon Kuskokwim uh, Health Corporation. And then she came to MedEx, and now she's back in uh, Alaska, working at Alaska Native Medical Center. It's been sort of an interesting controversy uh, in terms of we want to return Alaska Native folks to their bush communities because there's a huge need. On the other hand, the folks from the bush communities come into the Alaska Native Medical Center. It's very important for those Alaska Natives to have Alaska Native health care providers. When I was a health aide in the village, I saw boating accidents, ATV accidents, dog bites, you know, things like that. And here we get the trauma from the automobile crashes. And it's different here because they can come here within 10 minutes from a scene and be helped. Whereas it can take three to four hours turnaround time from the village to get a medevac plane in and out. In terms of alcohol, we see more of the long-term patients who have alcohol problems. They're homeless, living on the streets, whereas in the village, nobody's homeless. Now that I'm a physician assistant, looking back as a health aide, I didn't realize all the serious things that could have happened and I couldn't have handled them the way I could now. Actually, I have been interested in the medics program, being in the medical field. And I've actually wanted to be a PA for a long, long time. Sherry has encouraged me to go to the MedEx program. Frequently she'll say, you need to be a PA. You know a lot. 
The healthcare crisis in our nation is also acutely felt in the depths of our inner cities. Homeless people, immigrants, and working poor families struggle daily to survive. And when health problems arise, access to medical services becomes yet another challenge. For three MedEx graduates, reaching out to these underserved populations is a personal passion. I'm a person who has a mission. I mean, my mission is that people get respectful, accessible, affordable health care. Deep breath with your mouth open. I'm very proud of yeah. being a PA because there's so much that I can do. I work part of the time in the clinic. I also do outreach and I go to schools and daycare centers that serve homeless children and provide on-site health care. And also in this population there's problems with substance abuse and there are many, many homeless people. For me, it's a continual investigation. Okay, what more could we do? How could we improve this system? How could we improve accessibility? That's what our clinic and our programs do. Lois Thetford received one of the Jefferson Awards here in Seattle from the PI this last year for her contributions in the community clinics. I was really amazed. I was very touched and you know, you often don't get acknowledgement for work with things that are controversial like homelessness because people think, well, they deserve that, but they don't. And certainly none of the children. Is it? I get to do this wonderful work and it also stretches you in many ways. You grow, you learn from people, you give up a lot of your sort of personal freedoms. <laughs> <laughs> at times, you know, to, to make that extra stretch, but it's really worth it. Muy bien! <laughs> I was born in Laos. At age seven, communists took over Laos, and my family has to immigrate to Thailand. My mother died in a refugee camp because, for one thing, there was an inadequate medical treatment. As a kid, I want to help my mother, but I can't do anything to help her. So um, that was my motivation at that time that um, I was telling my mother that someday if I can do anything to help people, I will. Fumi is now at the VA and he works in mental health and post-traumatic stress disorder and alcohol treatment. And particularly interesting that he's seen a lot of, he as a Southeast Asian is a healthcare provider who's seen a lot of vets who served in Southeast Asia. And they would come into my office, look at my diploma on the wall, and tell me, you really fun. Oh. Either Laos or Thailand or Cambodia, and it's almost like we can connect. I didn't sleep for two days. It doesn't take much for them to open up with their experience to me. In addition to my job here at the VA, I also work part-time at the International District Community Health Service. I'm Jayek. Where I, um, deliver what I call culturally sensitive health care to the uh, Southeast Asian immigrant because I speak their language and I understand where they're coming from culturally. In my own words, I'm pretty successful looking at what I have accomplished as a refugee. And here I am working in the big hospital and providing this care. I have to pinch myself. I'm feeling really happy. Yes. How are you doing? Okay. Terry Scott, nice to see you again. I have the philosophy that uh, health care is a right. It's absolutely a passion. From my own experience, growing up in a, in a rural environment, in a segregated environment where at that time the, the condition of our nation did not allow all of its citizens equal access, and to see individuals have a common cold that would ultimately lead to pneumonia and a hospitalization that could have been avoided if the access had been there. Someone had you open nice and wide for me. I practice now a day and a half in the Department of Family Medicine. And you get individuals who come in who don't have health insurance or the working poor. And you're at wit's end trying to find resources. Terry Scott uh, joined our faculty and he's now our clinical coordinator for our urban clinical sites. But probably equally important is that he has a lot of responsibilities for recruitment. 
Uh, the medics program places a lot of emphasis on diversity. We talked about Hispanic farm workers in eastern Washington and we talked about Alaska Natives in, in Bethel and Bush, Alaska, but here in, in the urban area we have populations and connections that need to be developed. Checking the posterior cervical chain. My role here is allowing me to be able to put a lot more providers out in needed communities more than I ever could have accomplished by just being a single provider out there on my own. In the five years I've been here, I've seen graduates come back and, you know, guys practicing in the bush of Alaska. And they come back and said, oh, yeah, man, I'm loving it, having a great time. I saw this and said, you know, and by the way, thanks. And it's like, oh, that warm, fuzzy feeling. It's like, oh, that's, that's, that's what this is about. Welcome to graduation. This is a very exciting day for us, everyone in this room. It's wonderful to see all the smiling faces. It's wonderful to see all the families. When you think about the, the emotions at graduation, someone said that everyone is one part glad, one part sad, one part poor, and every part proud. I'm going to sleep in for um, several weeks, I hope. Go party with my classmates. <laughs> I want to go celebrate. I feel like a baby, just starting off. <laughs> yeah. What's tremendous about the medics program are the students and who they are and where they come from. Uh, people that are PAs sort of believe that if they were given the opportunity they could learn to do anything. They're sort of this can-do kind of attitude. And coupled with the fact that we choose some unusual people, we kind of believe in the high-risk, high-gain attitude, that there are some people that have come from non-traditional paths and we strongly believe in that investment. Hi, my name is Cheryl Parker. I'm a physician assistant student working with medics. I understand you're graduating today. Is that right? Can you uh, describe that feeling to me? How long have you been feeling this way? <laughs> Tell me, are you taking any medication for that? What habits have you picked up since you started Medics? <laughs> I want to give back to the people who supported me. Because of the Seafair Festival I work, it's in the central area. I get a lot of support from providers and the community there. I would like to give back to that. Cheryl Parker. I'm not going to be a rich PA, but <laughs> I'll be a happy one. <laughs> Susan Polovich Davis. I've really enjoyed my rotations that are more in sort of the underserved communities. In patient psychiatry, um, I had a federal prison rotation, and in those places, I mean, I don't know how you could feel more like you're giving back than, than in, in that type of location. Myrna Peter. I've always felt like I wanted to do something for my people, you know, for the Native Alaskans. They're kind of the ones that motivate me, especially the elders, and close to the elders. <laughs> yeah, I just feel that's why I'm here. I looked very hard for a good closing quote to encourage my fellow classmates. It isn't from Shakespeare, it's actually from Winnie the Pooh, but I think it sums things up quite well, and I hope you take that sentiment with you into the next year as you step into your role of a PA and move the knowledge that we've acquired from our head to our hands. You're braver than you believe. It's been a good decision, and I haven't talked to anybody in my class who doesn't feel that way stronger than you seem, I'm happy, <laughs> and smarter than you think. I know that I'll be working with, with our people. Each of these people is their own story, and what they all bring to healthcare is incredible. It's very satisfying to look back on, and to, to absolutely have no question about whether we're making a huge difference. <laughs>